going to be an introduction to infrared spectroscopy. If you go to your PowerPoint notes, you'll notice there's a link to that says MSU on it. That'll be the link that I'll be looking at here. All right, so here's our our uh, electromagnetic spectrum. You got the visible range here, and you got the infrared up here, and the ultraviolet here. This is a high energy, high frequency type light. Infrared is lower energy, lower frequency, long wavelength type light. It's this frequency of light down here that allows for the absorption of uh, functional groups. Now if we're going to take a look, for example, at the C double bond O, I want you to see some of the causes that infrared, some of the different things that infrared spec infrared uh, radiation can cause to these functional groups. So this is a C double bonded O. Let's take a look, first look at the C double bond O stretch. There we go. This is going to be caused by infrared radiation of a certain frequency. And it's around here, about 1750. The unit we use here is centimeters to the minus one, which is uh, called wave numbers. And all you really need to know is that this wave number frequency is directly proportional to frequency. So it's the inverse proportion to wavelength, but the direct proportion to frequency and therefore energy. So we need this kind of frequency of light to get a C double bond O to do this kind of thing. And that's unique to that particular functional group. Let's take a look at the CH asymmetric stretch. So that's 1H going in, 1H going out. And you can see that that one occurs at about 2850 wave numbers. The symmetric stretch occurs at about 2800 wave numbers. Then you've got some other ones that occur, like this one, scissoring, rocking, and wagging. And all of those appear around this area of the spectrum and usually these get blocked out by other things so they're pretty hard to see but these up here the asymmetric and symmetric stretches we often see those the C double bond O stretch we'll see a lot of as well and uh, those are going to be important uh, when we uh, when we are trying to figure out what uh, compounds or functional groups we might have alright you can all go and take a look at that yourselves at some point but uh, I just wanted to make the point that that's what infrared radiation does. These peaks here represent absorption of that infrared radiation. And since we know that certain functional groups are going to absorb in certain places, this is going to allow us to determine what kind of functional groups we might have in a given compound. So this is a typical infrared spectrum right here. We usually are only interested in the wave number scale and we go from high frequency up here to low frequency down here. 